Now please reach your hands toward these gifts on both sides. I want you to pray a blessing over these gifts. Somebody will open them up and receive what's on the inside of those gifts. You also can come and take a gift. Father, I sanctify these gifts. Hundreds of gifts here today given by your body. I pray that every gift be appreciated. May every gift bring life and joy to someone's heart. We bless these gifts in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. We sanctify these toys, that these toys will bring children closer to Jesus. And that these toys will be used to bring peace and happiness to some home that couldn't afford it maybe. We pray that the same way you meet the needs of these children and these adults here today, that you would meet the needs of every home here. We sanctify these gifts. May they not be abused. And may this be done decently and in order. And Father, let the Spirit remain right in this place today. That we will not hoard, but we will respect and we will honor the gift that is given today at this altar. We thank you again that you gave us the greatest gift and we receive the gift of that gift and now we are also giving our gifts we bless it in the name of the father son and holy spirit and everybody say amen, amen. you may be seated please we're going to dim the lights for a minute and then pay attention to the screens for a few moments and then brother kirsch dawa is going to come and he will give us direction Please give your attention to the screens, please, for our announcements. Brother Ricardo Chapman. Ricardo Chapman and the team, please come. Pastor Miles, and I am so happy to be with you today. Good day. I am Merritt Storr. It is my pleasure to say that we are happy that you joined us today for our special broadcast, The King's Gift, which is our presentation during this Christmas season. We trust that the service today has been a blessing to you and we welcome this opportunity to come into your home today. We continue to be available to minister to you and if you have a prayer need, please note that there is an icon at the bottom of the screen that we would invite you to press and we will be pleased to accept your prayer requests. If you feel so led to give into this ministry, please note that there is also an icon named donation and we would welcome you pressing that icon and giving your gift by credit card. It is indeed our desire and our wish that you have an enjoyable and pleasant Christmas season. We would wish that you would embrace the message that Dr. Monroe delivered today, which is that in the packaging of Jesus, there is a special gift, and it is the kingdom of God. Thank you. We pray that God will bless you, and we look forward to seeing you again on another broadcast from Nassau, Bahamas, at Bahamas Faith Ministries. Take care. Someone that loves God, say a loud Amen. Attitude for record-breaking success. Attitude for record-breaking Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus Hey, your neighbor, let this mind be in you. He didn't hear you tell him again, let this mind be in you. 
give it to us in the amplified bible let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in christ jesus let him be your example in humility somebody say attitude so where the king james uses mind the amplified bible uses attitude niv new international version everyone let's read your attitude should be the same as that of christ jesus new living translation want to go you must have the same attitude that christ jesus had somebody say attitude attitude for record breaking success it has been said that attitude determines all attitude That means how you behave determines what you become. How you behave determines what you become. That means who you are is more important than what you are. Because it is who you are that will determine what you will be. Attitude. Attitude. Attitude is a major determinant of success. And if you are interested in record breaking success, you should be interested in the subject of attitude what is attitude number one inward feelings displayed through outward behavior inward feelings easily upset and it upsets everything around your life inward feelings display through outward behavior you can feel your worst and behave your best whether you like it or not attitude affects your success this attitude be in you the same that was in Christ Jesus easily depressed frequently depressed constantly depressed regularly depressed and gradually it's affecting everything about your life attitude What is attitude number two? Perspective that affects posture. Perspective. It affects facial posture. It affects voice posture. Then why is your voice sounding so that Perspective. Perspective. Nothing is just working at all. And it afflicts you with a depressing posture. Perspective. Perspective. <laughs> a shoe company sent a salesman to a certain island on getting there. They don't wear shoe. They go barefooted perspective he sent a message back 
We are coming back tomorrow. Nobody wears shoes here. Nobody wears shoes. Went back. They sent another salesman back to the same place after some time. He shows up. Sees nobody wearing shoes at all. He said, nobody has shoes at all. There is a massive market for shoes. Respect. You don't see things the way they are. You see things the way you are. A negative mind sees negativity everywhere. A depressed mind sees depression everywhere. An oppressed spirit sees oppression everywhere. A person living life with a sense of being hated, you will see hatred everywhere you go. Let this attitude be in you. The same that Jesus Christ used to blast the wickedness of the Pharisees out of the way. The same that David used to level Saul and his wickedness. Amen, somebody? Not every failure is because of demons. What is attitude number three? Disposition which defines one's actions. Disposition. Another word for disposition is tendency. Tendency. As a tendency for complaining. As a tendency for negative speaking. As a tendency for misunderstanding everything. As a tendency for reading negative meanings into every word. Wow. This dress is looking good. That means yesterday's dress was not looking good. Negativity. Wow. Looking fine. That means other days I was not looking fine because you didn't say anything. The mind is just conditioned for negativity. Hallelujah. I pray for somebody here. That mental, emotional block of negative attitude shall come down today in the name of Jesus. Disposition or tendency which defines one's nobody knows why you are always so aggressive in your responses. You are still carrying the maltreatment of your secondary school class master. Following you through life. Turning you into a monster you are not. As I've, sur I've survived many things. I've survived many things. Survived many things. Look at me very well. You are looking at a survivor. So there is no battle you are still fighting. No battle you are fighting. Nobody opposing you. You look for opposition. That's how people do. I know very soon now you'll change. That's how everybody changes. I'm just informing you ahead in case you decide to change. I'm not bothered. So you sow the seed until you reap the harvest. You program everybody against yourself. Because you are too happy to change and enjoy good times. talks of attitude he says a major secret to Jesus success was not being born of a virgin was having the right attitude having the right attitude in first Samuel chapter 18 we read of a man called David in verse 5 of first Samuel 18 David went out Whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. Attitude. Behaved himself wisely. He 
studied the situation. He didn't give it a blanket behavior. He studied people. He observed settings. He took time to analyze situation. He didn't give it a blanket response. He behaved himself wisely. The Bible says, Saul set him over the men of war. Why wouldn't he be set over? Because how you behave determines what you become. So set him over the men of war. And he was accepted. This is a promotion that should provoke reaction. But the man behaved so well and so wisely. Even though he just joined the army, people said, allow him, he's a good man. Please allow him. They didn't challenge his appointment because the behavior disarmed their contrary views. Behavior, behavior, behavior. Don't mind them. They don't like me because I'm not from their tribe. Hey, 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 hey. hey! check your attitude. Check your behavior. Check your behavior. David, behave himself. Wisely. Do you agree with me, sir, that attitude affects success? Look at verse 30 of 1 Samuel 18. Verse 30. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than before. The man is not relaxing on attitude at all. Every new platform is studying new ways to handle people. David was a dangerous people manager, people developer. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 23 from verse 1, you will see where David tells you the kind of people he was leading. He said, he said these guys are sons of Belial. He's telling you the people that God brought to him. He said, sons of Belial. He said, nobody can leave them by carrying them in the hand anyhow. The sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away. They cannot be taken with hands. Continue. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and with a staff of spear and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same skill. These be the names of those sons of Belial who have now become the mighty men whom David had. No, no, they gave me, they gave me a useless department. All the people in that department are not serious at all. Eh? In fact, I, I, I just think they should just dissolve the whole department. Everything about you is dissolved, 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 dissolved. See the people God gave David. Sons of Belial. But he said there is a way they can be handled. There's a way they can be handled. These are the men that wanted to stone David to death. When the enemy attacked Ziklag in 1 Samuel chapter 30. The Bible said they wept until there was no more strength to weep. And they said they would stone David to death. David just said, can I address you people please? Can, can I just stop? By the time they listened to him, everybody mellowed. At the end, they were hailing him. Our captain, David. Our captain, David. Amen, somebody. I pray for you today. May the grace of a positive attitude rest upon your life in the name of Jesus. Another example in the Bible is Ruth. Ruth. In Ruth chapter 2. How attitude defines success. Open your eyes and hear me. Open your eyes and hear what I'm saying to you now. Open your ears and hear me. I'm not telling you stories. We are showing you secrets that made the men we desire to be like. Amen somebody. In Ruth chapter 2, the Bible speaking from verse 10 to verse 12, 
Boaz has shown Ruth a lot of favor. So Ruth fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why? Why? There must be a reason. Why? Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me? I am a stranger. What is it? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and had come unto a people which thou knewest not here to or he said the details have been shown me he didn't say it has been told he said it has been shown meaning it was so clear and so real i felt it i saw it he said we've not started yet to he said may god give you the kind of reward that will make people fear this god that has not disappointed us since we worship him the man's bosoms open to this woman why attitude attitude towards your mother-in-law right while Boaz is speaking see more attitude she bowed her face right while Boaz is speaking see the humility in her voice see the carefulness not to take favor for granted is God helping anybody here Take note of the following. Attitude is a function of mindset. It's a function of mindset. It's not inborn. It's a function of mindset. The Bible said in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you or let this attitude be in you. It's a function of mindset. That's where we read. That means whatever dominates your mind determines your attitude. Anything that controls your thinking creates your feelings and attitude. That's why you feel cheated. That's why you feel, feel maltreated. That's why you always feel that somebody's trying to take advantage of you. It's a certain mindset that is responsible for that thinking. And today I see it changing in the name of Jesus. Lift it and say, nobody can treat me. I, I am not in a disadvantage. God has ordered my steps. My life is not an accident. You see, whether they greet you or don't greet you, no challenge. When you understand that scripture, all things work together for good. People's behavior towards you will make you carry a negative attitude. They decide not to help you is for your good. They decide to help you is for your good. They refuse to give you the money is for your good. Amen, somebody? It is not their action that will determine your outcome. It is your attitude towards their action that will determine your outcome. How did you interpret their action? Did you consider scriptures? Did you take into consideration the promises of God? That the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? That he maintains your lot? Did you remember the scripture that says that the lines are falling for you in pleasant places? That they are no actually is leading you to your blessing? That is what determines attitude. Mindset. Mindset. David said, I spoke in my head, all men are liars, all men are this, all men are this. And I was dying slowly. As a guy said, I said in the cutting of my days, I am going, I will go to the pit, I will go slowly. He said, yet God was ready to save me. That's it. It's a function of mindset. Receive a new mindset now in the name of Jesus. Note number two attitude can be perceived by others. Attitude can be perceived by others, by God, by Satan, by men. 
attitude can be perceived by others. It can be perceived by God. It can be perceived by Satan. It can be perceived by men. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3 verse 2, 31 verse 2, Genesis 31 verse 2, that Jacob saw that the face of Laban was no more straight. The countenance of Laban. New Living Translation and NIV call that countenance attitude. Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been before. People can perceive attitude. People can perceive it. Jacob noticed. Now, Laban, this is the same Laban no, that told Jacob later, please don't go, please don't go. I have learned by experience, please don't go. Mouth was saying don't go. Attitude was saying go, go, go. I love you, I love you. Attitude is saying you are nothing. And if you don't understand that attitude can be perceived, you won't change. So you'll be misunderstood. Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude towards him has changed. How many people are judging you based on the attitude they perceive? Whether it is because of them or a transferred attitude. And they've used that to take a decision. This was what made Jacob decide I'm leaving this out. It has made people walk out of relationships. Perceived attitude. It has made business people cancel business contracts. Now something is, is, is as if this man wants to dupe me. Whereas it's not so. You are just very poor in giving feedback. You are very poor in feedback. But the person has interpreted it to me that you are a dubious person. I was secreting. And because of that, they change without telling you they have changed. Before your face, they say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, don't talk like that. Then they change. You can go to that office 100 times. They will answer you. Something has changed. Attitude. God also noticed the attitude. Verse 5 of chapter 31. Verse 5. Jacob sends for his wives and said unto them, verse 5, See your father's countenance. It has changed. But the God of my father has been with me. The Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent for his wife, his four, Rachel and Leah, and said, Now, why did God tell him to leave? The next verse, I have seen that your father's attitude towards me has changed. It's not like before. That the God of my father is with me. In other words, I have received fresh instructions from God because of this change of attitude. God saw it. Amen, somebody? It was God that said concerning Joshua and Caleb. He said they have another spirit. In Numbers 14, 24. They have another spirit. I notice a different kind of spirit in them. That spirit, there is attitude. God can perceive attitude. Demons. There's a kind of attitude that attracts them. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. Attitude can be perceived by others. What made Satan come to Job? Was Job the only man? What made Satan come? Attitude, Job chapter 3, 25, 26. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety. Neither had I rest. Neither was I quiet. Yet what came? Yet trouble came. Somebody said, I changed my attitude. 
that means i stop saying there's something wrong with me i stop saying i wonder why things are not working i begin to say all things are possible to him that believeth. i begin to say it is well with my soul i begin to say i can do all things through christ that strengthens me i begin to say the lines are falling for me in pleasant places i begin to say i carry the favor of god everywhere i go friends it is all about perception it's all about mindset attitude and the Bible says you shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. Take note. Attitude is a choice, not a gift. Attitude is a choice. It's not a spiritual gift. It's a choice. You choose your attitude. You decide either to respond with sadness or respond with joy. You decide either to respond with a negative interpretation or to respond with faith you decide either to respond with negativity or to respond with positivity it's your decision it is not a gift it is a choice somebody say i choose to rejoice i choose to believe i choose to have faith i choose to trust god i choose to stand firm i choose to keep hoping i choose not to give up <laughs> Psalm 27 from verse 1 to verse 3 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh now when you read verse 1 you think he was writing it with light all around him oh the Lord is my light no he was writing it with enemies all around him but he chose not to see enemies he chose to see god he was writing it with foes everywhere but he chose not to focus on the foes but to focus on god whom shall i fear why should i be afraid of all these threats why should i be afraid of all of this gang up why should i be afraid of all of these conspiracies is he feeling afraid very possibly is his body shaking very possibly but is he responding to the fear no way he refused he refused to respond to the fear it's a choice tell your neighbor make a choice are you sure you are alive? Tell your neighbor, make a choice. Say it louder than that. Make a choice. Make a choice. Choose to trust. Choose to believe. Choose to have faith. In Psalm 9 verse 2, he said, I will be glad and rejoice. What I love is I will. I will. I'm not waiting for things to change. I will. I'm not waiting for money to enter my hand. I will. I'm not waiting for people to like me. I will. I'm not waiting for situations to be better. I will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice. I refuse to die in depression. The devil is a liar. I will rejoice. Glory to God. Is anybody deciding to be happy whether Satan likes it or not? Lift your hand and shout, I will rejoice. Come on, say it one more time louder here. Let me tell three people attitude is a choice. Make the right 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 choice. It's a choice. Make the right choice. Choose to be happy. Choose to smile. Choose to see good things coming. And you say, I can't see it, but I can see it. It's not there, but I know it is there. But we walk not by sight, we walk by faith. I don't know how it is coming, but God cannot lie. He said, my expectations shall not be cut off. He said, it's thoughts for me of good and not of evil. To give me an expected end. Something good is coming. And you decide to see it. And you choose to see it. And you make up your mind to see it. Abraham considered not the deadness of his own body. Not the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was stubborn in his faith. Stubborn. Refused to walk by sight giving glory to God and brothers and sisters he became if you decide to live in doubt and depression it is you and your children that will lose no other person will lose from from morning till night your neighbor will not fall sick you are the one that will fall sick 
and when life is tired of you life will face you out and guess what your children will bury you and life continues but i've made up my mind i won't die like that i will be a blessing to my children i will affect my generation with knowledge i will be a shining light i will be a burning light i am a city set on a hill i cannot be hidden are you hearing what god is saying to you make up your mind thy word have i hidden in my heart that i may not sin against thee the entrance of thy word it given light and he given understanding unto the simple mary said behold the handmaid of the lord be it unto me according to it's a choice it's a choice you choose to be happy you choose to rejoice you mean somebody you choose to have peace you choose Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 I call heaven and earth to record this against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing he said the choose life ignore death and choose life ignore sadness and choose joy ignore depression and choose to be happy shout yes tell your neighbor you have made my choice and you cannot take it away from me you're refusing to greet me refusing to like me refusing to smile at me cannot take it away the devil is a liar you are the one wasting your muscles and your energy that i've made up my mind this joy that i have the world did not give it to me and the world cannot take it away somebody shout amen two times I will fight what I need to fight. I will face what I need to face. I will survive what I need to survive. I will go through what I need to go through. One thing is sure. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Are you hearing what God is saying? Life is too short for you to be responding to every negative thing life is too short for you to be responding to every negative signal and people deliberately know what you respond to so they manipulate you and you too you are playing along mumushously nala i rebel against this manipulation am i talking to somebody here i rebel against this deception somebody shall rebel 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 You've rented a house yet you cannot sleep food in the house yet you can't eat because somebody did not return your call to hell with the devil you meant somebody Try over somebody with faith here. You will survive their manipulations. You will rise above their tricks. You will escape their manipulations. Shall far above, far above, far above. I am seated in heavenly places. Far above, far above, far above. Hey, your neighbor, make your choice, oh. Make your choice to be happy. Make your choice. Make your choice. If you're 40, even if you're going to be 80, you have already lived half of your lifespan. Make good use of the remaining half. That's even if you'll be 80 by reason of strength. You've used up half already. Not to talk of if you are 50 or 60. Or 65 or 70 then then you use that uh, your, your last your last remaining 20 years to to play games no way no way no way i told my wife long ago i said i can never reject your food oh. nothing under this heaven oh, will make me reject your food oh. so that matter is settled permanently you know, we we no go do anything rich food side. I go chop oh. No way. Sam Sam. 
Vegas your wife's food and carry your face into the ceiling. Come, um, guys, torturing you at your age. And you are, you are posing, posing, posing like a slave in your own house. They give food. You can see the food. You do as if you can't see it. Most of self molestation, self abuse. And the food will smell in the whole house. The children are eating and they are happy. You see, see the hair, uh, uh, I'm eating, hair, uh, I'm eating. I feel like eating bread, like eating bread, but I'm good. I deliver you from momulity. Eat the food so you can have energy to continue the tension. If that is your choice. Eat the food very well. Eat, tell her thank you. Where did we stop? Let's continue. <laughs> but I'm sure you know that if you start eating, conversation will start. It is Satan that doesn't want you to eat. That devil that wants God to judge you is the one that doesn't want you to eat because he knows that if you eat, you will escape that temptation. You will reconcile. In order to make you miss your season of favor, he will make sure stubbornness that is like witchcraft takes you over. There's somebody you have escaped that trap today. I say you have escaped that trap today. Stand up and walk to five people. Tell them I deserve to be happy. I deserve. I deserve to be happy. I am born again. I am a child of God. I deserve to enjoy my marriage. I deserve to be happy with my wife. I deserve to rejoice with my husband. I deserve to be happy at home. I deserve to be happy. Amen. So, madam, in case you and your husband were frowning face to come to church, one service closed, go and cook, or the man will eat. <laughs> I prophesy he will eat. Who is receiving that prophecy? Shout amen. <laughs> he will eat. I'm telling you, he will eat. Go and cook. Something is going to happen. How can, how can, how can I, how can how self prepare my food? Are they mad? Did I pay bad price on how self's head? Unless under madam's express supervision. Hmm. Hey. The wife is there. You go to house help. There. Prepare me Gary and Sue. She would not use that broom hand and just do you anyhow. Whether I like it or not, life is in levels. Your house help has his or her level. Yes or no? How many of you remember that man called Isaac? Do you remember Isaac? What did Isaac tell his son? Go and prepare me venison. Carry your bow and arrow, such as I like. Bring it to me. Since when did his son know what Isaac likes? Since when? Since when did he so know what I see like Rebecca said, don't mind your father. Go and bring me ram. Does he know the difference between bush meat and goat? Bring me ram. When I finish him, he will know I'm the one he married. Bring me ram. Jacob said, yes, mama went and brought ram. By the time she mixed all the ram, goat meat, bush meat, cow meat, everything was alike. Rebecca said, does, does he think that this wrinkles has taken away my talent? Bring it in here. Let me show him that before you people came, I was on ground. Jacob brought the food. He said, my father, rise up and eat and bless me. He said, you have brought it so quickly. Yes, my father. How come? He said, your God brought it to me quickly. He said, bring, let me smell it. This food. Unless it's not Rebecca that cooked it. 
Immediately they brought the teacher. Oh, my son's venison. My son's venison. Rebecca was by the room. She said, eat the food. Eat the food. Man ate and started vomiting blessings. Vomiting blessings. Vomiting blessings. Immediately finished blessing. Esau came back with his water about pepper soup. Water about pepper soup. With, with all of the abundance of cooking skill in your house. See the way you are carrying polythene bag around like a glorified house boy. With beer beer everywhere. The polythene bag. Eating in your own parlor with plastic plate that you bought from Kilimanjaro. And you say there's nothing wrong with you. By this prognosis and diagnosis, I conclude that there is something wrong with you. I wish I knew where you were sitting. I will come near you and preach this sermon. Shout fire! Help me walk to fight people. Shout I must be happy. I must be happy. I, I reject depression. I reject frustration. I reject confusion. I reject every lie. I am made up my mind. I need a good attitude. I need peace in my home. I need peace in my house. I need peace in my marriage. I need peace between me and my wife. Shout fire, fire. A whole you eat inside polythene bag with plastic spoon. Kai, Satan is wicked. We plead the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I beg of you, forgive your husband, though. forgive your wife, whoever is the one causing trouble, forgive all of them. For they know not what they are doing. Tell your neighbor, attitude is a choice. Tell another person, attitude is a choice. Number four, take note of this. The wrong attitude can be changed. The wrong attitude can be changed. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, 23 and 24. Ephesians 3, 23, 24. Ephesians 3, Ephesians 4 now. I think it's Ephesians 4, 23, 24. Ephesians 4. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. 24. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Give it to me, New International Version, and I'll be. It says, be made new in the attitude of your mind. So attitude can be changed. And the next verse says, put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and what? Somebody say, I change that attitude. So it can be changed. It can be changed. It can be changed. Why is it important? Why is attitude important? Why is attitude important? Number one, attitude affects approach to life. Attitude affects approach to things, approach to people, approach to situations. Attitude affects your approach. It affects approach. Attitude affects approach. How people perceive situations determine how they will approach such situations. Attitude affects approach. And approach is what determines response. If you want a response of success, you must make sure your approach is appropriate. A wrong approach will attract a wrong response. Attitude affects what? Approach. Amen, somebody? Approach. Attitude affects approach. Praise God. I said praise God. The Bible told us in that Philippians 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you. Why? In Numbers 13 verse 30, and 31 two sets of people are shown to us the 10 spies and the two joshua and caleb their approach was determined by their attitude one said we are well able because of that let us go at once the other one said we are not well able because of that we shouldn't even try it attitude affects your approach to situations approach towards people 
approach to things and that affects the response you get from life number two attitude affects actions attitude affects actions attitude affects actions whether you act in boldness or you act in fear or you act in timidity or you act in cowardice attitude affects actions it affects the appearance on your face it affects your countenance it affects your voice tone it affects your voice speech it affects your voice pattern it affects your reasoning capacity it affects your choice of words and brothers and sisters you shall have what you say you have what you say so the wrong attitude initiates the wrong actions that keeps attracting the wrong responses towards you somebody said god forbid elijah in second kings chapter 6 14 to 17 the bible said elijah has been telling the king where the enemy soldiers are coming from so that he will avoid and the bible said the king said who is this person leaking on my secrets to the king of israel and they said it's none of us so it's elisha elisha that is living in dothan what how does he know he said the man knows so he knows what you discuss in your private chamber what? he said find him and catch him so they sent chariots of fire chariots horses and soldiers rather they sent them to surround Dothan. And the Bible said they surrounded Dothan completely. He sent either horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, two people in the same situation. Elisha in the situation, his servant in the situation. Both of them know God. They see the difference in their actions. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compass the city good with horses and chariots his servant said unto him alas my master what does alas my master mean put it in nigerian english we don't die finish <laughs> ah our own don't finish today alas my master what shall we elisha said stop that stop it attitude is what determines action fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them who is with us the servant must have said and how do i know that the servant said so because elisha now prayed lord open his eyes that he may see who is with us that is more than these ones open his eyes that he may see the same person that was living in fear and panic a moment ago when he perception is so important when he received a, a higher perception the attitude change is that master now i can see we'll finish them just now nonsense people rubbish all of you stupid come here if you can have you seen have you seen a child that was fighting or harassing and insulting his his friend or his neighbor and then just then his his senior uncle is passing by and they were chasing him then he hides behind the uncle what does he keep quiet hit your oh, come now you look for trouble from behind your uncle. look keep right there uncle don't mind them foolish people you carry sand and throw <laughs> because he has seen his superior they that do know their god they shall be strong can i pray for somebody here no more losses in your life from today no more losses in your life from today greater is he that is in you than the devil that is in the world somebody shout i am not alone attitude is very important attitude affects action how a person feels affects how they act how a person feels affects how they act number three attitude affects association and association is what determines your success association with the wrong people equals failure association with the right people equals success 
An attitude affects what? Association. Who you are affects who you attract. Who you are affects who you attract. In Proverbs 18, the Bible said in verse 24, He, a man that had friends, must do what? Must show himself friendly. A man that had friends must do what? Must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He said, people will be committed to you based on the attitude they perceive about you. And the attitude they perceive about you is what will determine their attraction towards you. Nasty attitude. Takes you years to get over a little thing. And the person sees how you drag on in unhappiness and you drag on in depression and you drag on in sadness. And the person says, I will, I will not be able to survive this one. No way. No way. We are not yet married. In fact, I'm not even proposed. See the way her, see the way her depression is oppressing me. Then I live in the same house with this one. <laughs> Never. So the same person that was beginning to show interest starts backsliding. That's going cold. No explanation. Because he has seen that it takes you so long to get over issues. It takes you so long to get over issues. Attitude has withdrawn favor. That a boss used to show a subordinate. Attitude. Attitude. He has never seen you angry before until the day you exploded. And he said, what? God forbid. I was eyeing this one for that position. No more, no way. You put this one in that kind of position, this, this, this company is in trouble. So all of a sudden, the paper is diverted. Attitude. Attitude. Attitude affects people you attract into your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want to have friends? He didn't say go around looking for friends. He that must have friends should go looking for friends. That's not what he said. He said just remain where you are and start exuding a friendly attitude. Just start exuding a friendly what? Attitude. He that has friends must, it is a must, you must show yourself what? Friendly. You must show yourself friendly. You must show yourself hallelujah number four attitude affects atmosphere are you are you catching anything here we're about to pray attitude affects what atmosphere affects your atmosphere it affects your atmosphere it affects the climate around your life it affects the spiritual environment around your life what God saw in Joshua and Caleb and called spirit was actually attitude that created an atmosphere. Attitude that created an atmosphere. God called it spirit. He created a spiritual atmosphere. Praise the Lord. Created a spiritual atmosphere. Attitude. If not for God, if not for God, I would have done something that you will live to regret. You spoke out of anger, but the person has not forgotten that sentence till Jesus comes back. If not for God, I would have done you something that you would have lived to regret. Till today, the person is still analyzing. What is it that, that he or she has that might, he can use against me? He said, I don't know what it is, so I better, I better find my level. Hey, you have not forgiven me, I've forgiven you. No, 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 there's no problem, no problem at all. There are no more safe in your soul because of the weight of words. And maybe to you, words don't mean anything. But to the person you are dealing with, words mean everything. Attitude. One outburst can cause 
us to four years engagement. One of us because of words. Choice of words. I regret ever knowing you. He can't recover. I regret. Regret? That's you actually regret? He will check the dictionary meaning of regret. <laughs> regret. Hmm. Oh, I am finished. <laughs> and you that use regret, you've never checked the meaning of regret. Anything that is standing as a mountain against your success, may the anointing level it today in the name of Jesus. Attitude affects atmosphere. It does. It does. The Bible tells us in Ruth chapter 1 from verse 9 to verse 22. 19 please. 19 to 22. Naomi returns back to Bethlehem, Judah. And the whole city is moved because of Naomi. And they say, is this Naomi? Hold it. Please somebody. What does the Bible mean by the whole city was moved? What do you think it means? The whole city was moved. Is this Naomi? It seems to me it meant that the whole city felt for her. The whole city had compassion for her condition. The whole city put themselves in her shoe. And they said, can this woman be this reduced? Including Boaz. Who was in that city? Who was her kinsman? The whole city was moved. The Nomi gave an instruction by attitude. Call me not Nomi. Call me Mara. And use some words that no Jew wants to be a partaker of. The Lord has cursed me because of my offenses against him. The mercy of God has been withdrawn from me. And every Jew remembers that when you are partner with a person, you become a partaker in his curse. So all the favor that could have flowed towards Naomi, withdrew. Even Boaz didn't lift a finger to help Naomi. None of her kinsmen lifted a finger. Why? Attitude. Express through words, through behavior close them. Fast forward to chapter 2. Ruth tells Naomi, how long will we sit like this and die of starvation? Allow me to go to somewhere. Favor is waiting to locate me somewhere. Change of attitude. And instantly a door in the realm of the spirit opened. And she walked into Boaz. Instant your feet. Instant. See how powerful a change of attitude. Any way I cost myself, any way I held on to a negative atmosphere, any way I created an atmosphere of, of depression around my life, an atmosphere of rejection around my life. Jehovah, today I reject negative attitude. Boy, so music and now all those utterances now, so my team they always be mountain. No, they ever walk, other people go go there, go walk. Once I read there, change, change you people don't want me to have peace in this house. All those utterances, angels are responding to those attitudes, demons are responding to those attitudes. They are responding. Right now, you're going to reject any negative attitude. Are you ready? Attitude of depression, attitude of hatred. Attitude. Some is self, self-mockery. <laughs> Can you imagine what he said? He said, I'm beautiful. Please, if he wants to waste my time, let him do quickly and go. Other people have done their own. Can you imagine? Said, yeah, yeah, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Never offer, no. See, attitude. And because of that, nobody appreciates you anymore. 
because of the utterances. The whole city could have moved in to rehabilitate Nomi. But one negative attitude shut the door until Ruth took a step to break that stair. Amen, somebody? Do you know that always speaking to your staff, you, you useless people, you, I don't even know why you are here, all of you are just useless. Do you know you are casting an attitude over your business, over your place of work? Always telling your husband or your wife or your children, rubbish. What kind of foolish people are in this house? Concerning you, things will always happen foolishly. But concerning other people, it will happen well. Because you shall have what you say. But thank God, whatever thought, imagination that has exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ, we can pull it down. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. First of all, lift your hands and thank God for the word you've received today.
Pastor Lift up your hands and let's worship him tonight. He's the reason why we're alive today. He's the reason why we lift our hands. He's the reason why we're here tonight. He's the reason why we're not in the beer parlor. Why we're not out on the streets. He's the reason why we are here today. Father, we worship you. Thank you. He's the reason for the favor we are stepping into. We worship your majesty. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. To take us further in this atmosphere of worship, I'd like us to receive my daughter, the third daughter. She'll lead us in a little worship before the word comes up. Destiny, call an angel. up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord the Lord which made heaven and earth he said he will not suffer my foot my foot to be me he will not slumber nor sleep for the Lord is my keeper the Lord is my shield upon my right hand upon my right hand for
Oh, Lord, and I, and I, and I. 
Oh, my God.
desperate for you, Lord. I'm desperate for you. your hands off if you can. Those hands high and let us maintain quietness. But he said, If I have found grace in your sight, show me your glory. He said, there is something about you I don't know and I want to know. Lord, please don't hide yourself from me. Don't hide yourself. Don't hide yourself. Don't let me worship you in darkness that I may know you. 33 years of ministry Paul the Apostle said that I may know him there are parts in you I don't know Paul seemed to be saying many people think I know you but I, I want to know you lift up your hands Lord, I need to know you. If I knew you more than I did, I would have been stronger for the people that do know their God shall be strong. Lift your hands. Lord, show me yourself. I need an encounter with you. I need your touch. I need your touch. something drastic in my life. Pull me closer to yourself. Show me that part of you I don't know. Show me that part of you I don't know. Give me an encounter this evening. Give me an encounter in this season. A life changing encounter. A life changing encounter. A life changing encounter. A life changing encounter. Do something drastic in my life. Let me know you like Moses did. Let me know you like Samuel. Let me know you like John the Beloved. Let me know you like the prophets of old. Oh, 
Give me a hunger for you that cannot die. Give me a passion that cannot die. Draw me to a place from where I can never backslide. Take me into the depths of you, Lord. Jika palapa ya da palapa do, jika papa laga ya da bros. Take me, Lord. Eka lida baba ya da bros. Itali baba ya da na malaga ya da ya da do. Draw me, draw me, Lord. Draw me, draw me, draw me, draw me, love. Draw me, love. I come running after you. I come running after you. Draw me, draw me, draw me, draw me, love. Draw me, draw me, love. We all with an open face behold us in the glass the glory of the Lord. We are changing to the same image from glory to glory. Lift your two hands. A transformation is happening in nature. A shift in spirituality, a shift, a shift in relationship with God, a shift in connectivity. It's happening. Lift your hands high. In the name of Jesus. Lift the hands high up now. Quietness everywhere. High up, high up. John the Beloved said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus, unto Spina, unto Pagamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardius unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea and I turned to see the voice that speak with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and get about the paths with a, a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in 
in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength when i saw him i fell as dead lift your hands now close your eyes that one capital letter o is in the midst of us now close your eyes and see him see him he's encountering people right now see him jesus of nazareth you have prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. Over the forces of hell and death, you prevailed. Over the powers of darkness, you prevailed. Oh, Nazarene. Oh, Nazarene. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. Over the forces of limitation. Over the forces of backsliding. Over the forces of hypocrisy. Over the forces of backwardness. Over the forces of witchcraft. Over the powers of HIV. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. You prevailed. Oh, Jesus the Nazarene. We love you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. You prevailed. You prevail. You prevail. What is happening to you tonight is not physical. A spiritual change. A shift. A movement to another face spiritually. Just happened. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. And whisper that name. and give him the praise. Give him the praise. And you are glorious. So glorious in this place. You are glorious. and give him the praise. Give him the praise. For this definite encounter, a Jacob has just become Israel. And Abraham has just become Abraham. A Sarai has just become Sarah. A transformation took place in the spirit. A shift to another level. A change of story. A change of identity. A change of capacity. A change just took place when your hands and give him the praise. Thank him and thank him and thank him. My heart is excited here tonight because you didn't come all the way from Kenya for nothing. You didn't come all the way from USA for nothing. You didn't come all the way from the UK for nothing. You came all the way and God did not leave you empty handed. Where your hands and give him the praise. 
we shake the hands of three black children and congratulations for the encounter. voice to Jesus give him all the praise give him all the honor give him all the adoration everyone everywhere wherever you are connected magnify the name of the Lord celebrate him glorify his name his eye and lifted up there is no king like him there is no God like him he is worthy of all praises is worthy of all honor is worthy of all adoration let everything that has spread praise the name of the lord lift him up lift him high glorify him exalt his holy name is the king of kings is the lord of law there is no such enough his understanding he is greater than the greatest our lord our god our king and our savior magnify him forever who can be compared unto him he is worthy bless the lord O oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name give him all adoration we bless your holy name there is none holy has the lord there is none besides him. All oh, neither is there are anyone like our God. There is none only as the Lord. There is no one. There is none only as the Lord. Oh, there is none beside Him. Neither is there are anyone like our God. There is none. Only as the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within 
me blesses all in name. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, 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 oh. he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Come on, lift up your voice and bless the Lord. He has done great things. Great things he has done in your family. Great things he has done concerning your children. Bless the Lord from your heart. Bless the Lord, He deserves the glory. Bless the Lord, He is worthy of our praise. Bless the Lord, He is high and lifted up. Bless the Lord, He is from generation to generation. Lord, we give you praise and we give you praise and glory. Find a reason to be grateful. We give you praise and honor forever. In Jesus' precious name, we worship. Amen. Now, as we continue celebrating the faithfulness of God on the altar of prayer today, I'd like you to understand that the attitude of gratitude always sets us up for uncommon increase on the earth. The attitude of gratitude will set you up for uncommon increase on the earth. In Psalm 67, verse 5 to verse 7, Psalm 67, verse 5 to verse 7, the Bible says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield our increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. So God is a God of blessing. But gratitude is a provoker of his blessing. The Bible says, verse 7, God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. When we genuinely express gratitude to God, we are positioned to provoke undeniable blessings from him. Then shall the earth yield an increase. So something is loaded embedded on the earth but it will not yield up until something goes forth from the earth one of the things we saw from this text of the bible is that when the people praise god when the people expresses gratitude to god the earth will yield forth what is in need for humanity to manifest further Therefore today, I'd like you to lift up your voice wherever you are and find a reason to be genuinely grateful. Thank God for peace. Thank God for provision. Thank God for the things that are working in your life. Thank God for His grace. Thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His loving kindness. Thank God for His goodness. Thank Him for the things He had promised to do that He had done. Thank Him for the one He has promised that you are yet to see the performance. Thank God for the things that are working and the one that are yet to walk. The same God that has made one walk is well able to make all walk. Glory to God. Lift up your voice, everyone. Thank God for life. Thank God for divine provision. Thank God for answer to prayers that you have prayed and you have received answer. Thank God for the prayers you have prayed that the answer is yet to come. Give him praise and glory. Give him honor and adoration. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Thank him because he's faithful. Thank him from the bottom of your heart. Give thanks to God. He had secured you from the beginning of the year till now. Many perished. Many died as a casualty. Many were victim of what they did never bargain for. But thank God for your life you are still bouncing you may not have been to where you are going to you might not have gone to where you desire to be you might not have received what you expect to receive but 
thank God for what you have. The same God that had done the one in your hand is well able to do the one in your heart. Oh, glory be to God. The same God that has handed over to you the one in your hand has the same resources to deliver the one in your heart. Bless him forever and ever. We thank you, O Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we give thanks. I'd like you to thank God one more time. Before we start and step into the place of prayer, I want you to thank God saying, Father, I thank you because today prayer will not be banned over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the situation of my life will not be too difficult for prayer to handle. Father, I thank you because today the circumstances of my life will not be too difficult for prayer to handle. Prayer will not be banned over my life today. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because prayer will not be fruitless over my life today. The prayer of today will not be banned over me. My Lord and my God, I am grateful. Libros and glado shalibradi. brada. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. We give thanks. Amen. Now when you look at the Psalm 67, verse 6 now, the Bible says, Then shall the earth yield an increase. So there are increases on the earth, but it's got to be provoked by appreciation. Now you have expressed appreciation to God, you need to call forth the increases, the blessings, the breakthrough, the favor that are loaded on the earth on your behalf. Therefore, you are going to lift up your voice and pray this prayer. Say, Father, today on the altar of prayer, I call forth my increase, my blessings, my favor that are on the earth. In the name of Jesus, on the altar of prayer today, I call forth my increase, my favor, my blessing. Whatever you desire, it is loaded on the earth. The earth shall yield our increase. The earth shall yield our blessing. The earth shall yield our result. Ligatal, imbrasuse kabal, rekute, rekute bragadiza. Come on, call forth what belongs to you that is on the earth. Call forth your favor. Call forth your promotion. Call forth your advancement. Call forth your breakthrough. Every good thing that is on the earth for me, I call it forth today. I call it forth today. No longer will it be withheld. My breakthrough on the earth, I call you forth on the altar of prayer today. My favor on the earth, I call you forth now. And Libra Nakoso Godoya, Malebradi, Ishakal, Erido Sisigaba, Malabrodus Keperedo Hilaha. Oh, glory to God. In the Ligra Digla 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 Da, I call forth my breakthrough. I call forth my lifting. Everything that is on for me on the earth, I call it forth today. Ila Brakuskaba. No more shall the earth deny me of what should advance my life. No more shall the earth deny me of my testimony. I wish you are pressing the button of prayer. Call forth the things that should make your life better on the earth. What is on the earth for me? I call forth now. I call it for that job you have been looking for. Call it forth. The Bible says the earth shall yield an increase. You cannot be on the earth and not enjoy the increase on the earth. Oh Lord my God, on the altar of prayer today, I call forth every good thing that will make my life easier on the earth. Thank you my Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I see someone calling forth miracle children right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, every breakthrough Every blessing, every promotion, every advancement, every lifting that is available for you on the earth. 
prepared for you on the earth, a portion for you on the earth, that your life has been missing, you will not miss it today. On this altar of prayer today, every breakthrough available for you on the earth, it shall be delivered. It shall be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Ijackers of breakthrough will no longer hijack your testimony. Ah, diverters of testimony will no longer be able to divert yours today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you. We bless you because you are the prayer answering God. Every time we pray, you answer. We thank you because today on the altar of prayer, you will answer us. We thank you for the things you have been doing before now and the ones you have done before. We thank you because as we pray today, you will answer us. We bless your name. We magnify. We celebrate. We adore you. Accept our thanks today in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord of heaven, I pray today on the altar of prayer that you will arise, you will manifest, you will glorify your name. Answer all your children today, O oh Lord. By mercy, answer our prayer. Look down upon our petition, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God, whatever be the situation, that your children will present before you today. God of heaven, let there be divine intervention. Answer speedily. Answer graciously. Answer favorably. Because of the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Someone is on this line with, a, with heavy tears in your eyes. Saying, Lord, what is going on with my life and what is going wrong? God said, you have not been forsaken. Neither have you been forgotten. He said you will surely win the battle that you have been fighting for a while. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I have come to pronounce as I hear, this season will become to you the season of joy in the morning. Joy in the morning. Your morning of joy has come. Everywhere the devil has been denying you of your entitlement. Heaven will bring them to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, today, grant utterance. Let there be release of authority. Let no word fall to the ground. Let every prophetic pronouncement be supernaturally fulfilled with answers from above. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus Christ precious name we pray. Amen. And all the saints of God say big amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God. I welcome you to another encounter with the power of God on the altar of prayer today. I am excited because of some of the revelations that God unveiled to me today in the place of prayer concerning what we want to pray for tonight. And for everyone that is joining this empowerment teleconference prayer for the first time, you are welcome in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, by the grace of God, we shall continue our prayer series on praying the Psalms. We have prayed from Psalm 1 all through Psalm 10, and today we are going to flow to pray from Psalm 11. So if you have your Bible with you, open with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 11, as we look at what God has for us today in his word on the altar of prayer. And I'd like you to understand that Psalms are not magic. Psalms are not magic. God's word is not a book of magic. It's a book of revelation authority that performs on the altar of prayer psalms are inspired prayer utterances psalms are inspired prayer utterances and they are loaded with power for enforcing total freedom 
from the terrible situations of life psalms are loaded with power when you connect with them revelationally and you pray with them what utterly believing god you get answers why because if they had worked for david and they worked for all the sermons they are packaged to walk god's word is packaged to walk we just need to understand how to press into it in order to profit from it today as we pray from psalm 11 you shall be a beneficiary of the testimonies embedded in psalm 11 psalm 11 will work for you psalm 11 will lift up your head psalm 11 will be the prayer solution to your life-threatening situation in the precious name of jesus christ now by the grace of god we're going to look at it from verse 1 down to the end of that psalm and i want you to pray revelationally as we connect with the word of god now let's look at verse 1 of the book of psalm chapter 11 the bible says in thee lord do i put my trust i'll say ye to my soul flee as a bird to your mountain in thee do i put my soul why then is it that a voice is coming to me saying as you flee as a bird to my mountain the, the psalmist here is opening our understanding to something very relevant and the revelation i got from this verse of the scripture is this where you put your trust defines where your triumph will come from where your trust is determines where your triumph in life will come from when you put your trust in god you surely will triumph through god the voices of the enemy and the voice on the earth is saying to my soul flee to the mountain but i know that my solution is not on the mountain my solution is in god so i have put my trust in god my triumph also must come from him my triumph must come through him and that's why you want to pray this prayer today there are people that have been trusting god waiting on the lord but it seems as if the enemy is saying to them we will see what god can do for you therefore i'd like you to lift up your voice and pray this prayer with all sense of authority say oh lord my god my trust is in you do not let me be put to shame in the name of jesus christ oh lord my god my trust is in you my trust is in you do not let me be put to shame in the mighty name of jesus christ my father my father my trust is in you i refuse to be put to shame do not let the enemy put me to shame do not let me be put to shame concerning my marriage do not let me to put to shame concerning my home do not let me be put to shame concerning my academics do not let me be put to shame concerning the ministry somebody lift up your voice and pray that prayer very well let me triumph on all side help me to triumph from this situation help me to triumph oh god my trust is in you i refuse to trust in any man i refuse to trust in anybody i refuse to trust in the system my trust is not in the doctor my trust is in you oh god oh do not let me be put to shame pray that prayer when your trust is in god you cannot be put to shame when your trust is in god your triumph must come from him oh lord my father my trust is in you do not let me be put to shame do not let the adversary put me to shame do not let this situation triumph over me in the mighty name of jesus christ my father my father my trust is in you i put my trust in you help me to triumph on all sides help me to overcome concerning this battle help me to defeat what has been defeating me arise oh lord on my behalf my trust is in you god will not disappoint you god will not allow you to be put to shame the enemy will not laugh last over you 
Your trust is in God. Answer must come from Him. Heaven must arise on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord said there is someone listening. It seems as if everyone that makes you at the same point has left you. Even the people that you have been of assistance to, you are the one showing them the way. You have been the one teaching them. Yet you have been at the same point. And it's as if the enemy is laughing last over your life. Here there is one from heaven. I decree by the word of the Lord everything that has vowed that your life will not move beyond that particular location. May God bring you out from there. In the name of Jesus Christ, every situation that has come your way, that has made people that are not up to you, to be ridiculing and reproaching you, that has spawned you from a somebody into a struggler, today on the altar of prayer, heaven will arise for you. You will triumph on all sides. God will help you to triumph. Whatever has caused you shame, is hereby terminated. Your season of shame is over. Your days of shame is over. Your era of shame is over. No more shame in your life. No more shame in your family. No more shame concerning your health. No more shame concerning your son. No more shame concerning your marriage. Ila bratuka birani. Rapuska pradina gaya. Atelida. In Keludi Bredizalia. Thank you, my father. I speak with authority. The Bible says in Psalm 31 and verse 1, He said, Oh Lord, indeed do I put my trust. Do not let me be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. I decree and I declare that today on the altar of prayer, God will deliver you. That situation. That has been bringing shame to you. Bringing shame to your family. Bringing shame to your ministry. Oh God of heaven. He will arise. He will deliver you. He will rescue you. Make a way of escape. A way of escape. A way of escape for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you heavenly father. Now in Second Chronicles. Chapter 14, we still pray from that point of scripture. Second Chronicles, chapter 14, the Bible says from verse 9, something happened to the king called Asa. The Bible says a man by the name Sarah from Ethiopia, he came to him with a host of thousand and thousand, three hundred chariots. They came to battle with Asa. But the Bible says in verse 11, and as I cried unto the Lord, because his trust was unto the Lord. And the Bible says, As I cried to the Lord and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, our eyes are on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. O oh Lord, thou art our God, let no man prevail against thee. And the Bible says so. The Lord smote the Ethiopian before Asa. The Lord smote them to the extent that they ran away. It looks as if Asa had lost the battle. But when he looked unto God, when he recounted that God, my trust is in you.